This is Elias. I'm an engineer working on the Lightning Dev Kit. And today I want to give you a quick introduction into how to get started with LDK Node, how to set it up. And at the end of this quick tutorial, we should be capable of paying an invoice. So what is LDK Node? LDK Node is a ready-to-go Lightning Node library built using LDK, the Lightning Dev Kit, and BDK, the Bitcoin Dev Kit. That means LDK Node builds upon the very powerful LDK API and wraps an included BDK on-chain wallet to create a much simpler API that can be used to set up your self-custodial Lightning Node. It has to be noted that while today we're going to be using Rust, as LDK Node is written in Rust primarily, LDK Node also provides a number of language bindings, uh, namely in Swift, Kotlin, Python, and Flutter, to be used in these language environments, and in particular to be used in mobile environments. So without further ado, let's get started setting up our project. So I can just create a new sample project with Cargo, the Rust Cargo tool, and then we can build this initial project. And we can, of course, add the LDK node dependency to this project and run build again so that Cargo downloads and builds all the dependencies for us. So this will uh, take a sec until the dependencies are built. And then we can get started setting up our Lightning node. All right, so let's jump in to the main file already. We can import our LDK node library, and I know that we're going to use the builder object and the config object first and foremost. We will be adding more imports as we go. So let's set up our config. Um, actually, this needs to be mutable, and we will set up our config from the defaults, which are saying defaults, and then we can set our network we're going to be using in this case. Uh, note that LDK node makes use of the underlying Rust Bitcoin types from the Rust Bitcoin library, which are we are re-exporting through our API. So you don't have to add additional dependencies for that. So we need the network type here to decide that we are going to use the network, uh, the rec test network in this setup because we are going to connect to a rec test faucet I've set up. All right, and then we can also set up our builder. This is going to be builder from config, config. All right, and on this builder, we can now configure um, the explorer. So we're going to be using, we can now set that to you would probably, if you're following along with the local rec test setup, you would set that to your local Explorer uh, instance with the rec test. I know that, or I set up this faucet, as I said before. So I'm going to do this string, and we can now builder set, uh, do builder set Explorer server to set the Explorer server and configure the node to use this Explorer server. And speaking of the node, we now can get the node object by running builder.build.unwrap. If you're unfamiliar with the unwrap parts, this is due to Rust typical error handling. So many methods in Rust return a result that can be either okay or return an error. And unwrap essentially just panics if there would be an error and would unwrap the success case for us. Um, note that, of course, typically you would not just unwrap any result, but actually handle any error that may arise in a production setting. In this sample, it's totally fine just to call on. So, all right, we can now also start up the node. And at the end, we want to stop the node again, although LDK node should call stop on the allocation of the object. So it should do that for us, but it's probably just better to have it symmetrical like this. So we could start at the node and just as a first example, we can probably uh, print out our node ID. Let's say node ID here and node.node ID 
that should give us our node ID if we are running this cargo run. And yes, this prints our node ID, and this is already the node ID of our Lightning node we just set up. So to go back, we probably also want to print our on-chain funds. On-chain funds, we can do that by doing spendable on-chain balance sets, which returns a result. We're going to unwrap this, and this should print how many sets we currently can spend. That should be zero, of course, as we currently didn't fund this node already. To fund this, we want to first print out our on chain or an on chain address rather and generate new on chain address should be the call. Let's see. Uh, and this of course returns the result again. All right. And if we run this, we should get an on-chain address that we can actually fund right here. We have an on-chain address. And if we now go to the faucet, as I said, in your local rec test setup, you would probably mine a few hundred blocks and then send some funds to this address. And then, of course, mine a couple of blocks on top of that. Um, in our setup here, the faucet generates new blocks in 15 seconds intervals. So to actually see any change, we should probably add a sleep here just to wait for a bit, let's say 20 seconds or something like that. And after 20 seconds, since I talked for a bit, hopefully we should see a spendable balance at that point. And yeah, so hopefully we should see a spendable on-chain balance by now that would allow us to... Right, now we have a spendable on-chain balance of a million sets that we can use to create a new channel with. Very nice. Um, all right, we, I think we just leave the print statements here. Maybe we don't need to create a new on-chain address every time and we can then um, we can do open press and we can connect open, ah, sorry, node.connect open channel to connect to our channel counterparty. However, note that there are a lot of parameters here that are needed, of course, uh, just to walk through them quickly. We, of course, need the node ID, the actual network address of the counterparty. We need the how many channels, uh, how many sets we want to have in the channels, how many millisatoshis we're going to push initially to the counterparty side. This parameter is for supplying an override for the channel config if we didn't want to go for the channel defaults, and finally, if we wanted to announce the channel. So first, let's set up the node ID, and for this, we're going to use public key. Um, I think this is the use LDK node Bitcoin sec p public key, which will we'll be using as the type for the node ID, and the node ID can be public key from string, and of course we need the counterparty's node ID, and the faucet here has a handy get node ID call that would allow us to get this node ID of the faucet and we need to unwrap this to get the node ID. Similarly, the address, we will get a net address and we will parse that from a string we, we will provide here and that will be ldk node.tnull.de and 9736, I believe, is the correct port and channel amount satoshis, we will just do 900k satoshis since we got a million and some to spare is good. We will not push something to the counterparty. We will, from the beginning, we will not override our channel config and we will not announce this channel publicly. So, and we're going to print out the result that this will give us just to be sure that everything worked all right. However, 
after that, we want to actually wait until we get a event that the channel is actually pending. Ah, wait. Ah, for. Imported the wrong net address here. And all right, now we should be good to go. All right, I will now wait on the next event that will be happening. So to talk quickly about um, event handling and LDK node. The idea is uh, that the event handling is mandatory in LDK node. So we generate events and we store them for you and persist them to disk and we make sure that you handle them and call us back via the event event handled call. So what we should see, be seeing here is a channel pending event that is generated when we negotiated a new channel with the counterparty and is pending confirmation on chain. And after that, we can just wait for the next event actually. And this should give us a channel ready event. And after that, uh, our uh, event should be um, ready to be used. So let's try this. What now happen is we open a channel, we then wait until we see it pending, we wait until we see it confirmed, which will be roughly after 90 seconds, i.e. six blocks are mined with 15 seconds block time, and then ah. what did I miss? 27. Ah. Here is of course a typo. It there is no underscores in URLs. <laughs> All right, we see a channel pending event right away. And now after 90 seconds, this channel should be ready to be used. And then we're shutting down the node. And so to talk a bit more about the event handling, since we have time, the idea is that we handle the events for you as possible, but we expose some events and we expect you to handle these events and tell us that you handled them. Just to make sure that even if the application is killed mid-execution, for example, on mobile, this is really important as, for example, iOS tends to kill task execution arbitrarily when, for example, the app goes into background. So to make sure that in this case, where we kill, are killed mid-execution, we are not losing any state and you will be re-delivered the events upon restart. That means that you need to call event handled every time for every event because otherwise we will regenerate the same event over and over again until you explicitly tell us, okay, I've seen this. Ah, nice. And there it is, the channel ready. So the channel was confirmed on chain and can now be used. So to actually use it, we just go here. We don't need to open another channel. We will just get that. We won't wait for the for any particular event right now, or actually we will, but that sh should hopefully be payment successful. To get an invoice, we can just call get invoice here and we will get a payable invoice. All right, this is a payable invoice string. We need to parse that invoice, let invoice equals invoice dot dot from string again. We just paste that in here, dot unwrap. And we need the invoice type that is re-exported, that it will be LDK node, lightning invoice, invoice. All right. We can now pay this invoice by simply calling node.sendPayment invoice. We need to take this by reference and then we can just print out the send result just to be sure we get an okay back here and after some time we should see a payment successful and handle that payment successful event all right let's see ah wait we should probably before we immediately send the payment 
give the node a few seconds, like five seconds, just to reconnect to our previous. And right, really nice. And we got an okay uh, result back from the sending call itself, which this here is the payment hash of um, the payment and we get a payment successful event. So we paid our invoice. And if we now look at the faucet, our faucet also tells us that we paid the invoice. So this was a brief intro into how to get started with LDK node. We went through all the necessary steps that uh, to set up an initial a lightning node with LDK node and to pay our first invoice. I hope you find that interesting and I see you next time.